Hey there, prayer warriors. Just want to say praise God. This is just an amazing week. And uh, hey, just let's uh, just open in prayer just for a brief moment as we talk about prayer this morning. Uh, dear Lord, I just lift up your name. We praise your name. We give thanks to you just for whatever is in front of us or behind us or beside us. You place there. We'll never understand, Lord, but in some cases we just, you are our last hope. We just open our hearts this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, once again, my name is Mark, and uh, hey, it's just a great day to be here with you just to talk about prayer. And just as a quick recap, we've been talking about prayer. Um, and prayer in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the New Testament is mentioned over 600 times. Um, and there are some great prayers out there, uh, prayers for forgiveness, Prayers for salvation, our own salvation. Um, prayers of thanks and wisdom, guidance, uh, help, healing. Um, prayer for others. Prayer and fasting, um, safe travels, uh, corporate prayers. You know, the church gets together, and we've, we've talked about a number of those things here. Uh, and uh, this week, though, I've got a big thing on my heart, and it's you, men. I'm praying for you. The men in the families, the men in our communities, the men in our church. And it just, it's heavy on my heart that maybe, you know, we had a, a, a New Year's resolution to pray more, to pray with others. And just want to say, you know, ask, well, how's that going with you? And uh, it's a tough time to be keeping up those New Year's resolutions, I'm sure. But what I really want to do is ask you, have you lost your spark? Have you lost your fervency for God and prayer? Have you lost that desire to get off the couch and get in the game? Have you just been sitting around? Have you lost that desire to pray for your wife, for your family, for your children, for our church? Have you lost that? Kind of set aside. And men, we need to pray. We just need to pray constantly. We don't need to be a David as we saw there in um, you know, 2 Samuel. David is a king and a mighty warrior, should have been out on the battlefield in the spring with his soldiers, with his troops, with his legions. But no, he was sitting back there in Jerusalem and being lazy, he gets up in the morning and he spies Bathsheba. And he goes down the road. So you've been kind of lazy in your prayers lazy in that on getting back on the battlefield or how about how about jonah jonah was a great prophet as it turns out but god called him to do something to go to nineveh well guess what he said god it's not me i don't want to go and look what happened to him you know him and that leviathan and he wound up doing it anyway because he realized he needed to get back in the game he needed to have that fervency of prayer and prayer for others and to spread the gospel of, of, of the Old Testament and his love for God. How about Peter? Peter, you know, he was kind of all over the map. You know, are you kind of like that these days? Yes, no, maybe, kind of. Deny him a couple of times. Deny our Savior in his time of need. Or how about Thomas? You know, later on, and that's why they call him Doubting Thomas. Ah, no, Christ isn't risen. Oh, Christ is risen indeed. But what I want you to do is just kind of think about, have you walked away from your first love? Remember back when you first became a Christian, men, and you were fired up for God, and you were out there witnessing to others, and you were praying for others. And you were engaged in prayer, and, and it was like, come on here, come on over here, let's just pray for a couple of minutes. Have you kind of lost that? Have you lost that zeal over the last couple of years? But I, what I want to do is just kind of, I want to challenge each of us, because prayer is the first thing that for, for, for us as men that we kind of set aside, and we fill with something else whether it's good or bad or indifferent, whether it's, it, have you spent more time in prayer or watching the NFL football games lately? Yeah, big challenge here. You know, where are our priorities? And that's the first thing, and, and sometimes we consider prayer as a last resort. Um, but it's that one power tool we've got there in our, our garage that we can use 
that we can call upon that is probably the most valuable tool that we've got in our rucksack. And, you know, we know we should pray more often. Jesus prayed tons of times, and so he has set our example for us. And, you know, that's kind of the crazy part. So no matter how you pray or how often, you have to remember that men, we belong to God. You know, he, he's our God Almighty, our Lord, and he is for you. He is for me, is for us as men. And, and I apologize that I, I sometimes don't understand the hearts of women, but I can kind of hear the hearts of men right now. And it's men, we have to get back in prayer. Um, because you don't know for all the reasons that we've encountered, you know, a job loss. We got laid off. Our hours got cut back. Our bank accounts have, have gone back to zero. We're behind on payments on a car or on a medical bill. Um, we don't know those reasons, but God will walk with us during those times. And that's the important part for us to understand. Um, you know, so it's, it's like we've been backed into a corner in some ways, but that doesn't mean give up on prayer. That's the first thing we've got to go to. And, you know, because it says there in Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Psalm 55, 22. You know, he, cast your cares on him. And then the other thing is, is um, a little farther on is Psalm 91, 14. Psalm 91, 14. And it's, yeah, I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. And I'm going to put you at the center of this, this recognition that God recognized you in your prayers. And, and it says, because you hold fast to me, that's God, because you, the man, is holding fast to God in love. I, God, will deliver you. I will protect you because you know my name. You know the Lord's name. You know God's name. And when you call to him, he will answer you. And he will be with you in times of trouble. He will rescue you and honor you with long life. And he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. And so that's, yeah, from Psalm 91, yeah, significantly paraphrased. But I'm telling you guys, we got to get back in the game. Um, and it's a call to prayer. This today, from me to you, men, is a call to action. It's a call to love. And, and we've got to get back in the game, get off the bench, and get back into prayer. We have to pray for our families, our spouses, our children, our community, our church, our nation. We can hear about our nation, and we need to collectively or individually get together and pray for our nation, get involved. If you want to get involved here at the church, call me. We have lots of opportunity for men and men's ministry that you can get involved with a law enforcement luncheon. You can get involved with Tuesday and Thursday morning Bible studies. We'll have evening studies. Um, there's so much for you to do here because I know there's something in your heart that wants you to get involved, to get back in the game, get back on the battlefield, just where David should have been. So I just want to call on you, say, hey, you know, be the Christian man that God wants you to be every day. Lift up yourself in prayer, give thanks, lift up others in prayers. As I'm lifting up you men today in prayer. Thank you so much.